They're just like watching from like the telescope onto them. Oh yeah, man, the Asian Americans <laughs> they're really sure going are fighting for go over there. Like, oh, what's going on over there? Which country is better for Asians to live in, Canada or America? Hopefully by the end of this video, We'll have an answer for you. Yeah, this is sort of a classic Asian American internet debate that was sparked up once again because Pew Research just released a study saying that eight out of 10 Asian Americans think that violence against Asians is on the rise. Now, obviously Canada did not do a study, but I'm assuming it'd be like two out of 10 in Canada. So it sparked up the debate again, Andrew, which place is a better place for an Asian guy to move to and have a family <laughs> and live his life? Is it Asian, is it Canada or is it America? Is it America or is it Canada? All right, so what we're gonna do in this video, we're gonna go over the general differences between Canada and America, and then we will rank Canada and America on the metrics of what Asians particularly care about, whether it's education or Asian food or unity or, or safety and stuff like that. Right. So make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications. By the way, guys, we are fully aware of the, the legal complexity of a Canadian becoming an American and an American becoming a Canadian. But who knows? Maybe you're watching from overseas. You're picking, you know, which country you want to move to. Andrew, on the outside, America and Canada are very similar, right? Because they're both part of North America, both Anglo-Saxon Protestant countries, a lot of influence ancient-wise from the French and the Dutch, but Canada maintained a lot closer ties to England and the French side. Of course, yeah, they still have the queen on the money. A lot of our friends who are not even like white Canadian, they speak French because Obviously, Quebec is an entirely French-speaking province. 22% of Canadians are able to speak some level of French. Andrew, in America, it's less than 1%. Yeah, we, so, don't, we, we don't like the French in America. <laughs> yeah, so with that like European influence in Canada that is much stronger, whether that's from the UK or from France, Andrew, that actually affects a lot of their policies, whether, like you said, the parliament, their uh, gun laws, their... Um, work-life balance, higher taxes, mm -hmm. but more social services. Yeah. Um, it also has to do with geopolitical neutrality and uh, pacifism. They have different opinions on uh, atheism and agnosticism, the separation of church and state. And uh, the 1982 Canadian Multiculturalism Act, it's in their constitution to respect multiculturalism. That word is literally in their constitution. Yeah, very different healthcare, obviously pros and cons yeah. of the healthcare system up there. It's free, but it's worse. Um, they have a much higher portion of of First Nations people, mm -hmm. people from India, people from Asian, a much lower ratio of uh, African American or Latino uh, population. And, and by the way, a much, much lower population in general. That's about right. 40 million people in Canada. We have almost 400 million in America. It's a tenth of the amount of people. I mean, almost it's smaller there. than a lot of states. Yeah. You know, like California is way bigger than Canada. Uh, both countries do have their own rednecks, though. Like, but I think the rednecks in Canada are more centered around because they don't really have like a south. They have them in the center right above like North D Dakota. Right. Nebraska All the area. country stars from America tour Alberta, Canada. <laughs> um, I actually heard that like in America, when you see an American flag being waved, typically that is something that is more representative of right-wing ideologies. Wow. And in Canada, the, uh, being really proud of the Canadian flag is often representative of left-wing ideologies. And, and not to say they don't have racism, there's still Confederate flags being flown in Canada. Right. But maybe not in Vancouver and Toronto. Right. Um, and also, they generally, for the most part, have a, at least overall country-wise, have a more geopolitical policy of neutrality yeah. or pacifism easement. Yeah. Um, moving on, Andrew, to more of the fun stuff mm. that most people are thinking about when okay. they're thinking about Canada. Canada. They're thinking about what? Cold weather. Toronto. Hockey. Bag milk. Poutine. Saying, eh, don't you know? Oh. Almost like a, a North Dakota, Minnesota, upper Midwestern, like, oh, yeah, don't you know? And the Toronto slang, you know, which also is kind of comes from like the Caribbean influence, like saga mans and like, yeah, mans is crazy. Things and yeah, do you mean the, the thing that Drake, Drake uh, kind of cribbed, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. More true for your head top. Be careful when you speak on my name. <laughs> and actually low key and a lot of American like pop culture celebrities, whether they're in Hollywood or popular uh, media are from Canada. Low key. You don't uh, know. Yeah. And shout out to the Asian ones that popped up recently. Simu, Sandra O, oh, both from Canada, both very famous in the Asian sphere. I think that one thing when I was doing research for this video that stood out, Andrew, is people just said Canada internally, externally is just generally way less violent than America. It is, yeah. Yeah, I think the, cri the violent crime rates are like significantly lower. I'm talking about across different crimes. I don't even want to name uh, them. So yeah, when it comes to violent crimes, I saw a crime rate, but it depends on what they call crimes. I think a lot of, there's still a lot of robberies and stuff like that. But as far as like the murder rate and the gun violence rate, obviously it's super low, uh, much lower than America because they don't have guns. Right. Um. Actually, uh, I do think though, to be fair, Andrew, Canada is also way more of a boring place. Ooh. I think undisputably, I, okay. Canadians will tell you this. Now, There's a reason why all the Canadian celebrities and music artists 
live in America. Oh, it's boring here. Oh, you think our country is boring oh, yeah. here? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You, let me guess you, uh, Yankees want a little bit of violence to spice <laughs> it up. Oh, yeah, huh? Uh, so, all right. So this is a really good segue, David, to get in to how does Canada and America rank as far as what Asians specifically care about. Now, Asians are not a monolith, I get it, but generally, what do Asians care about when they immigrate to a country? They want uh, upward mobility, they want education, they kind of want safety too, and stuff like that. So let's let's just go through some of the rankings, and this is what what I've ranked them as. Right. Okay. Um, immediately, Andrew, you got to lead off with where is the best education system? Okay, right? so for top colleges, America wins. I don't even think it's close. It's not you even know, close. Shout out to McGill, but it's like- uh, And shout out to U of T, great, but uh, you know, UBC, sure, great, but not, not Harvard. However, public school education is generally considered more even in Canada due to the high taxes, so the money goes it, into the it, school it system. It is more of a socialist country, so theoretically- I guess more fair when it comes to the quality of public services, rural to, to, to metropolitan. Uh, a little bit of information. Our cousin is a public school teacher in Canada, and I don't think that she would want to teach in America. She oh, wouldn't want to take her chances. And I think she really, really enjoys it. However, interestingly enough, Andrew, her husband is a banker, mm. and bankers get taxed okay. in Canada. They, oh, yeah. my goodness. I don't even want to get into the specifics of it, but let's just say there's a banker in Canada, Andrew, and they do the exact same job in America working the exact same hours. They probably get to keep a significant more portion mm -hmm. of their liquid cash at the end of the year. Yeah, this comes to the next point. Ability to make lots of money. America wins. America oh, is the best down. place to make a bunch of money. Like, literally, I don't know how many ways, if you want to hustle people illegally, if you want to make it the legal route, if you want to do social media, you will get taxed the heck out of yourself in Canada. Like, all the NBA players that play in Canada, they get taxed a lot. It right, is true. Right, right. 50%. Right? But you also get healthcare. So, um, safety from violence, I think Canada wins. Canada's safer in violence. It's probably safer towards Asians. Uh, Asians make but, up a larger percentage yeah, of but, Canada. Yeah, uh, but if I was up there, I wouldn't even feel alive. You know, you might as well. It's just every day we hey, be hey, the same. Hey, hey, I, I'm, I, Maybe Asians don't care about that. Uh, experiencing everyday racism, I think Canada wins overall. I mean, I think you might hear things, but like we said, violence is less. Climbing the corporate ladder, I think it's a, this one's a little bit debatable because I think there's more corporate ladders to climb in America. However, you know, you might uh, still be seen as an Asian person in both spheres. Um, more different types of Asians, America wins because America has more different types of Asians. There's more right. diverse here. Now, Asian wars. unity. David, what do you th who do you think wins, Canada or America, as far as Asians feeling Man, together? I think a lot of things when you compare America with Canada, it's so difficult because, like you said, it's one-tenth of the population. It's got a completely different history. It's almost like, you know, some people call it America's hat. Whatever you want to call it. I call it, it the helmet. It's very different. Like, it almost goes back to the racism point. I think something being more European means that you might even see more offhanded comments. Not really necessarily Canada, but in Europe. You're going to... People are going to be like, Chinese, Chinese, you know, or maybe even pull their eyes back at you. But then the risk of violence is way lower. So how do you categorize? You know how, like, a lot of people just want a yes yeah. or a no yeah. answer? Uh, yeah. To be honest, racism, it's like, it's actually very nuanced and complex. Here's my answer. And from our observations, our experience living in Canada and knowing the Asians out there, obviously, most of the Asians are either uh, Indian, South Asian, or Chinese. That's the predominant, mo that's most of them, right? So I feel like in Canada, maybe because they're mostly Chinese and that's the main narrative that they might feel more together. And a lot of them are more like middle class because they're the, how immigration works in Canada. Right. 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 Um, right. They only, they want you to be middle class yeah. before you come over. Well, oftentimes a lot of Canadian Asians, they don't think about racism. I mean, they're just like clueless to it. However, if you are tuned in to what's going on in America from Canada, you could view the battles that are happening in America. It's a, it's a, it's a battle filled country. Yeah, they're just like watching from like the telescope Onto a, oh yeah, man! The Asian Americans <laughs> oh, really sure are going fighting for a lot. Like, oh, what's going on over there? And then they're taking that influence and they're understanding our battles from here. So I don't know. It's tough to say. Debatable. Anyways, um, Asians in power and policy. I don't know. It's debatable. I'm not really sure how politics fully work in uh, uh, Canada. However, I will say there's a lot of Asian American politicians, but a lot of them are either like co-opted yeah. or whitewashed. So they might not really have Asians in mind. You know what I always say America is? America is very much a power move and then a power counter move country. So there's a lot of energy on both sides, whether it's like some a move that was designed to counter and then you got a counter to a counter. I think that's a lot different than a country where you're just nobody's making moves in general. Or right. if anybody's making moves, they're very mild. I think there is so much power to be had in America that it does fuel a lot more tension. OK, so uh, ability to be seen as a non-foreigner in your own country, kind of like, hey, I'm Asian Canadian, I'm Canadian. 
Canadian, right? I think Canada wins. I think other Canadians will view you as Canadian generally. I but think I do America- think that obviously it's a lot more amorphous of like, what does it even mean to be Canadian? Because right. obviously if different types of white people, Franco and Anglos are in Quebec and they're arguing over like, whether to be more French or be more speak English, that that's already an internal battle that was fought in America in 1782 <laughs> with the F- Louisiana Purchase. <laughs> yeah, I think that was a long time before that. But yeah. yes, uh, multiculturalism act of 1982, it is in their constitution. Okay, in the specifics, if you are Indian, South Asian, and you like to party, move to Canada. Yeah. I see so many more brown people at the clubs in Canada. No, no, the, the, the DJs and yeah. stuff like that. No, it's like way, there's, a, there's a way more bigger uh, Indian population. Especially in Toronto and Vancouver. I think if you are Hong Kong Cantonese, I actually think it, it depends on how strong you identify with that identity. Canada's better. This is so specific. Yes. <laughs> yeah. A lot of but that's Hong what we Kong, are, so we got to say it. A yeah. lot of Hong Kong needs in Canada. All right. And finally, Asian food, because Asian people care about Asian food. All right. I think Cantonese food is better in Canada. Makes sense. I think Indian food probably could be better. Logically. I, I logically. Could see that being better. Every other type of Asian food, I think, is better in America. Because we have the other types of Asians. Vietnamese yeah. food is going to be better. Koreans, we have more Koreans. Uh, Filipinos, we have more Filipinos. And it might, I just thought of this. I think climate has a big portion to do with this because it is generally like really cold in Canada. Yeah. Like you, you, it gets like, Andrew, imagine Minnesota weather at the warmest or Seattle weather at the warmest. And then it just gets colder until you hit Alaska. Yeah, yeah. Toronto is, in, is the north, bro. Um, all right, so I guess... David, we kind of gave people our general breakdown. You guys can let us know in the comments down below if you agree or disagree. I'm not saying these were all facts. These were based off our observations. Uh, did I make it up? No, I think it was. I think there were good guesses. So I guess, David, do you have an answer for the people? How would you answer the question, is Canada better for Asians or not? Nah? Okay, so here's the thing. Okay, let me put it in context. I'm not in either of these countries. I'm, I could either immigrate to America or Canada, any city. All right, here's the thing. I think that America provides the most upside, but it also provides the most downside depending on your situation. Mm. I don't know if that's, uh, you know, but no, there's no one, si- uh, one shoe fits all, one size but, fits but, all. But, but, but let's, be so, let's be specific, man. So basically, America is a way more volatile country. It has a lot higher highs and has a lot higher yeah. lows, but each individual game character entering the game, right, whether you're Toad or you're Bowser or you're Mario, which is the all-around pick in Mario Kart, you're going to interface with those pros and cons differently. It also depends in America where you move. I think it depends more because I think there's a greater variance in America. You can move to Texas, Arizona, Florida. You can move to Seattle, which like feels like, I would say, 50% like Canada. You can move to Minnesota, which kind of feels mm-hmm. like Canada, in my opinion. Or you can move to, you know, someplace that feels completely unlike Canada because America is a much, much, much bigger, more diverse game map. So you would need to take a look at your own specific situation. But I do think if you're willing to deal with like, a more contentious, also interesting, multi-layered, but difficult life, there's, you you could probably get higher peaks in America. Yeah. Okay. I would say, if you're the type of person to say this phrase, look, I don't need a lot of money. I want to live a nice, stable life and be chill. And I don't need a lot. And I want nice people around me. Move to Canada. Right. If you're, you're saying are, nice people. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Ooh, and if you're the nice. person that's like, yo, I'm trying to make it. I'm trying to kill it. I want to make as much money as possible. You got to move to America. There's so right. many ways to make money out here. Yeah, and there's so many ways to, uh, to you know, figure out, do little tax tricks and stuff like that. But, and, I mean, the truth is, Andrew, somebody who's watching this, it's like they can't move, right? Well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, hopefully, it's helpful to people. Obviously, it's not that easy to move. I remember when Trump got elected and so many people were like, I'm going to move to Canada. I'm going to move to Canada. And then Canada was like, mm, it's not that easy. <laughs> right. <laughs> But I will say, it seems like more Canadians want to move to America than Americans want to move to Canada. Yeah, I would say overall that that's true because people who feel like they can be high earners in Canada, they're being capped out once they make 200K or above because their tax rate is like jumping. Whereas in America, you could almost argue the more you make past like whatever amount, you, you're almost able to like do this and do yeah. that, bus, bus moves. Yeah. Um, uh, any last words, David? 
I think that it really depends. I mean, for you, are you are you saying pretty much Canada? I met people who I think that they would have had a better life in Canada. And I know Canadians personally, obviously, even in my own family that are bankers in Canada that really wish they had American citizenship so they could just keep way more of their money. Yeah. I mean, again, I hate to say, yeah, it's tough to say, but, but I, hopefully we built out a profile of a person that might enjoy Canada more and a profile of a person that might enjoy America more, because I can't tell you what to do with your life. Shit. I mean, there's still a lot of unhappy people in Canada. Right. So, and I think it ultimately has to do with like, do you like the city or the suburbs? Cause it's almost like Canada is a suburb of a country and America is like the big city. Yeah, the cities are not that big in Canada. Obviously, just the whole country, to be honest, population-wise, is not that big. I think for myself, I really would prefer America just because, like, that's just what I've seen growing up. And I'm sort of attuned to the way things work here. When I'm in Canada, it almost feels like uh, I'm in a weird, like, uh, corporate campus. <laughs> that's how it feels to me. I'm not saying right. the good or bad. I, I would say, of course, I'm staying in America. I'm picking America. But there is... A nice feeling I get when I'm walking around downtown Toronto at night and I got my phone out and I'm looking at it and I'm not worried about anything. Yeah. I'm actually not worried about violence. Yeah. For now, sure. maybe, maybe that's just me overrating how safe Canada is, but I literally don't like in, in America, if I'm la out late at night, just walking down with my phone, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Let's just say that Canada would be like empire on Fox and America would be like power on Showtime. It's an interesting analogy. All right, everybody, we're going to wrap it up there. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. Is Canada better for Asians than America or not? Or let's think of a type of profile of a person that would more thrive in Canada than America. Yeah, to be fair, be you helpful. can't argue, Andrew, with the success of the Asian Canadian actors, though. I can't argue with Simu C Leo. <laughs> I don't know. You didn't come from America. Shout out to Simu. But all right, everybody, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments down below. Please hit that like button. Oh, by the way, guys, I do think in America you can find places that, like, really mitigate a lot of the downsides of America. But sometimes those places, I realize, do require a certain amount of income. For example, the Bay Area. You know, you grow up in a nice part, get all the upsides of America, mm. less of the downsides, but your family got to make a lot of money and spend a lot of year. Uh, you know what? Another debate is should America be more like Canada? Ooh. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching the Hot Pot Boys. And until next time, we out.